All right, here we go. Human chromosomes. So our objectives for this chapter. Describe how a human karyotype are used and explain the patterns of inheritance that human traits follow. We're going to look at how pedigrees can be used to an an analyze human inheritance. All right, so what's a karyotype? A karyotype is an actual picture of a full set of a full set of chromosomes. So it says the genome is the full set of genetic information that an organism carries in its DNA. The analysis of any genome starts with chromosomes. A karyotype shows the complete diploid set of chromosomes grouped together in pairs arranged in the order of decreasing size. And so <clears throat> when they used to stain, they would stain uh, chromosomes a specific color and then uh, arrange them in, in uh, order of decreasing size. And so number one was the biggest and number 22 was the smallest. And X and Y are uh, <clears throat> the 23rd pair, okay? So we have 23 pairs, 46 individual chromosomes. So there's our X and Y. So ultimately, we call those, as it says, two of the chromosomes are sex chromosomes. So the females have two sex chromosomes, and the male have one X and one Y. There are more than 1,400 genes on the, on the X chromosome, but the human Y chromosome contains only about 158 genes. And so where there isn't a corresponding gene on the Y chrom chromosome, so we could have you know, a dominant and a recessive, there's only one on the X chromosome, and it's not on the Y chromosome. Whatever gene that is on the X chromosome, we have. Okay, so whatever you got from your mother, that's what you're getting. So it could be from your mother, it could be from your mother's father, your mother's mother. All those are possibilities. So take some time and look at some of these. There's some familiar ones. Hemophilia is a typical X-linked trait. There's a cleft palate. Uh, one there, muscular dystrophy typically occurs in males because they don't have another um, chromosome to, <clears throat> you know, to react to that. There's a mitochondrial uh, disorder. Uh, yeah, PK, PG, PGK deficiency. Color blindness is right. And what they're doing is they're locating. This is called gene map. Okay. So... And there's uh, a variety of genes on the, on the Y chromosome. There are many more than this. This is just a simple, sim simple version, okay? So the X chromosome is physically, <clears throat> physically larger than the Y chromosome and contains more information. So what we call that is those are the sex chromosomes. So here's our sex chromosomes. And the rest of the 22 pairs are called autosomes, autosomal chromosomes or autosomes. So we can have an autosomal disorder or a sex chromosome disorder. So we differentiate that way. And okay. so overall, males have 20, 46 uh, chromosomes and a you know, with an X and a Y, and females have 46 chromosomes with an X and an X. The diploid number is 23, the haploid number is 46. Remember that. So one of the more simpler ways we transmit human traits is a simple dominant recessive relationship. So there is a gene called the MCR, MC1R gene, and that helps determine skin and hair color. And if you have uh, a recessive MC1R gene, those alleles, if you have two of them, they'll produce red hair, typically pale skin. So that's what, that's what uh, is an example of that. And there's combinations of those. Co-dominant and multiple alleles. We went over this when we were doing genetic problems that we have the different blood typing. And all of these alleles, A and B, are dominant. So if you have A here, you have um, type A blood. If you have B, you have type B blood. If you have both A and B, 
you are AB. If you have O, you don't ha have any of those characteristics. So A and B, again, the genotype is AB. The antigens, which is that, that presenting protein on the, on the blood cell, is I mean, we call one an A and one a B, and that makes you an AB blood type, right? So there's our A's. And our O then does not have any of those antigens on the blood type. So our immune response, it does our immune system does not respond to that because it doesn't recognize it as foreign. All right. Color blindness is a very common sex linked trait, and it is typically uh, occurs in males because the X and Y chromosome determine sex. The genes located on them show a sex linkage and colorblind then is on that X, X link trait. And so if you see the number seven and 13 here, you're not colorblind. If you don't see the number seven and 13, you may be red, green colorblind. And I say maybe because I'm not a physician and I'm not gonna diagnose you, you need to talk to an eye doctor, right? Which you probably already have. And you're probably a guy, so it would be unusual to not have someone in a group of 40, 50 people where 25, 30 of you are, are males, 20, uh, at least 20, that one person is not colorblind. It's very, very actually common. Most genes, and uh, so we have this thing where the X chromosome in inactivation. So most genes in one of the X chromosomes are switched off. And the genes then are expressed from the other X chromosome. Because if they're both going all the time, if, you know, XX, then that could be a problem. So when they're switched off, they form a region called the bar body. So female calico cats are tricolored. And the color of the spots on their fur is controlled by the X chromosome. Okay, so pedigrees. This is this is kind of important. So what we're looking at is a flow chart of a family tree, right? It could be a pedigree of anything, a dog, a cat, a, a, a family. But there's some constants that go with this. So when you look at this, you need to know how to interpret it. A circle represents a female and a square represents a male. A colored in circle means that is what trait they have. If it's an open circle, it does not have, or a non-colored circle, it doesn't have the trait. So in marriage, there's a line that connects those two. And then um, you can have a shaded, that again, those shaded individuals are presenting the trait, okay? So here's the parents, comes down, here are three children, the female, this female got married to this male. This female is not married. This female, this male got married to this female. They both had the trait. They had one child with the trait, one child without. And we may ask you, well, predict what kind of an inheritance pattern that's going with. So is it all males that's getting the trait? Uh, could it be recessive? Is it dominant? So, all right. So in this example, we're using a white forelock as a, um, which means, you know, you got this strip in the hair. It's, act, it's an actual thing. It's not just hair color. And the male has it, the female doesn't. Well, in these patterns, then the male and the female have it. And in this pattern, the female has it and she married a male. So this male married a female who had the trait, not related to this male, but she had the trait. And they had two children, two females. So um, this is one, this is a good one to think about. All right. So what kind of inheritance pattern do you think that that's going to, that's, that represents? So that's what we're looking at, human, uh, human inheritance patterns and the human genome. So.